Now, there are several parts to this question. We've got this curve C1, which has this equation y equals x squared, all multiplied by x plus 2. And we've got to find dy dx, the gradient function, and then sketch the curve C1, showing the coordinates of the points where C1 meets the x-axis. And finally, we've got to find the gradient of the curve C1 at each point where that curve C1 meets the x-axis. So first of all then, for part A, we've got to find dy by dx. So I'd copy down y equals x squared bracket x plus 2. And to differentiate this, what we could do is expand the bracket. So if we expand the bracket, x squared times x is going to be x cubed. And then you've got x squared times the 2, which is 2x squared. And to differentiate this, therefore, we got dy by dx. To differentiate this with respect to x, we just apply the rule that we multiply the power by the number in front of your x and then subtract 1 from the power. So you get 3 times 1, which is 3 then reduce the power by 1, so it's 3x squared. And for this term, we do this 2 times the 2 here, which is 4, and then reduce the power by 1, so you've got x to the power 1, or just simply x. So there's dy dx, which is often referred to as the gradient function. Now in part b, we've got to sketch this curve c1, showing the points where it crosses the x-axis or meets the x-axis. So in part b, let's set up our axes first of all. So we've got a y-axis and we've got an x-axis. Now if I want to know where a curve crosses or touches the x-axis, then y would be equal to zero anywhere along that line. So if I was to say when y equals 0, we've got 0 would equal x squared times x plus 2. Or, if you like, x squared times x plus 2 would equal 0. Just reverse that round. So, to solve this, you've got three factors, in fact. You've got a repeated factor here, x times x. And then you've got this factor, x plus 2. And in a case like this, each of those factors should equal 0. So it would mean that x would equal 0, or x plus 2 would equal 0. And that would lead to, well, here we've got x is 0. And if we subtract 2 from both sides here, we get x is minus 2. So the curve is going to cross the x-axis at minus 2. So just mark that there, say. Now, because x could equal naught or naught again, it's what we call a repeated root, then this is a sign that when you have a repeated root, that the curve, instead of it crossing the x-axis, it touches the x-axis. So it's going to touch the x-axis at zero. And when it comes to sketching this, we've got what we have here is a positive cubic equation. And positive cubic equations look something like this. They come up from this side, then they are shaped like this, OK? Let me just draw it over here. They're shaped like this kind of thing for positive x cubed. So you can see that what's got to happen is that the graph is going to come up through the minus 2, peak there, it's going to come down through the origin, touch it because we've got a repeated root there and then go off like so. If it was a negative x cubed graph, negative x cubed graphs look that kind of shape. Okay, So do check out that you're familiar with that kind of thing. Now I'll draw a line down here and we'll look at the third part, part C. And in part C we've got to find the gradient of C1 at each point where C1 meets the x-axis. In other words, the gradient when x is minus 2 and the gradient at the origin. Now to get that gradient, we've just got to put when x is minus 2 into our gradient function here, dy dx. So when x equals minus 2, 
let's lead with the gradient okay equals so it's just going to be 3 times minus 2 all squared plus 4 times minus 2 so what does this work out at? Well you've got minus 2 squared is 4, 3 fours are 12 and then take away 8 so it's going to be a gradient of 4 and you can see that that looks visually correct because you've got a positive gradient going up through here. If you drew a tangent at x equals minus 2 its gradient would be 4. Now when it comes to the gradient at the origin here's 0 I think it's pretty obvious what it is it's a stationary point the gradient's going to be 0 here but what I'll do is we'll put when x is 0 and just check it out through the equation dy dx so the gradient will equal 3 times 0 squared we'll just put it in as a token that it's 3 times 0 squared plus 4 times 0 and indeed you can see we've got 0 plus 0 which is 0 all right